Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Adam's Quest. In the last episode, Rosemary conquered the Baragina's challenge with a little bit of help from her knight in shining armor. He was able to help instill her with confidence again, which should definitely help her when they leave the new island. Everybody is ready now. All of our ports are taken, so it's just a matter of cleaning up a little bit of extra food. Maybe we could even have somebody come over here to see if there's more coconuts in the trees. I mean, we have a rye ready to scoop them up. So, Cat Mint, if you wouldn't mind, maybe you could jump over here, knock down some more, and then scoot right on back to the ports, because we're not leaving without you either. There we go. So now we should be over a hundred pieces of food again. I am so, so shocked that we managed to do it. Food was really a struggle in the swamps before, but I guess our tribe always finds a way. I feel like part of that was probably also Vienkir's blessing, because it seems like after our tribe discovered that normal berry bush, that was when everybody really started to pick up the peas, as far as these berries are concerned, as far as the coconuts. So that must have had a role to play. Our tribe knows about that blessing now too, thanks to Lychee of course. And before we leave, we do have to make sure that Lychee can come over here and finally put her friend Sunshine's remains to rest. That one Aru, that one relentless root that always seems to respond there, came back just in time for her to do her job. So while she might not be able to carry on the gravedigger's role on the next island, she's sending her wishes along with little Rosemary, who I'm sure is going to be able to find somebody around here who can help her out with their digging paw. It's kind of fitting, too, that both Passion and Ballad are the ones that have the digging paws. I mean, we already know that he is quite smitten with our stripy little Passion fruit, so maybe he's going to use that to his advantage, just as a way to get to know her better. They can both bond while they search for roots in this new land. Part of Ballad is probably feeling pretty confused right now anyways, a little bit conflicted maybe. He feels like he might be letting his mother down, because he is now about to separate himself from his two brothers. It's just that they seem so much happier here. Sunbeam is staying so we can keep everybody safe. He can be the knight that he always wanted to be. And Chorus is just singing away off in the swamps because he's found a new love in Anakoi. So it's not as though he can force them to go with him, and he knows that there isn't really enough room anyways. It's a hard decision to make, but he's just hoping that it's not going to be the end of his family. Hopefully it won't bring that curse back down upon their shoulders. I think we should be ready to leave though. So with one final goodbye to all of our tribe mates, let's have Nutanu do the honors. Ballad is probably a little bit distracted right now anyways. He's not in the best condition to lead our tribe to the next island. So let's see where we're going to end up. Is this the island I thought it was going to be? It looks like the jungle is actually quite far away from us. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I think this is the island. It's called the Jungle Gate. So typically I think there would be an island to the north, right? Because otherwise, what's the point of having a jungle way up here? I mean, technically we don't even have to set foot inside this jungle because there's no reason for us to go to the northern ports. We're going to go toward this island instead. Does anybody know what this might be? Oh, please tell me it's not like another savannah or something. Our tribe cannot survive another one of Melody's savannas. We are still recovering from the last time we spent so long there. Though I suppose whatever islands we go to next, we don't really have to stay there for very long. Ah, but look at this. I think Van Kier may have pulled through for us. It looks like we have two berry bushes right off the bat, and one of them appears to be the poison berries that Nutanu knows so well, but the other one looks like anybody could pick from it. We could actually bring Clementine up there to do the job, as the leeches come over to say hello. Go ahead and take a good swipe at this one. We're not going to let anything catch you guys off guard. There is the tiniest little morsel in the ocean, too. I suppose new duke gear would be just the sort of reckless soul who tries to scoop it up despite his lack of skill. 
fumbling the whole way, with the fish just barely slipping out of his grasp. But he's not going to give up on you, little guy. He's going to catch you one way or another. Just have to regain his energy first. Ah, oh, there's even a roots out here too. Oh my gosh, excellent. So you know, we could actually get started on that mission right away. Maybe as a little offering to Van Keer himself. We'll just have to bring Rosemary in this direction so she can point it out. And I feel like she would stick with Ballad anyway. She knows that Ballad is her mate's brother, so she knows she would be safe here. Ballad could even help carve out an area for her to build her nursery. We'll clear out this grass, and then hopefully with your lean body, you can lunge all the way across. Ooh, is this a spot for one of those moles? And healing fruits too? Oh my goodness! What a lucky spawn this is! Yeah, I think Van Keer is very, very happy with our little tribe. So who should go up to investigate the healing fruit? One of our healers for sure, and I guess Catmint would be the best. She has a lot to think about anyways. She does have her love for their leader Nutanu weighing down on her mind, so this might be a good way to clear her head. Oh my gosh, or not. Oh, Catmint. Sign after sign. That seems pretty clear. Maybe tomorrow's the day that you should finally confess your feelings. I wonder if Clementine might want to gravitate in her direction too. They both do have the personouts. She probably feels like there's quite a bit that she could learn from Catmint. So we'll bring her up here as well, and we'll settle Catmint down right next to the healing fruit. Oh, you guys. Two nests. We didn't even have to build this one over here for Rosemary. Of course, our flighty birds have never been too good at clearing out their pathways, so I suppose Ballad and his family wouldn't know about them anyways. Now, Passion. Where should we bring Passion? She is also extremely adventurous. In fact, I feel like she would be happier to go after these shells. Maybe for now, that's what we'll have her do. That way, she can still... Oh, stay close to Ballot? Oh no, Passion, I thought you would be okay there. I didn't think it was that deep. It still had the icon for the paws, so I thought it wasn't swimming. But I guess we're going to want to bring you back to solid dry land. Oh, you poor thing. Ballot's really going to have to keep his eye on you, isn't he? But she doesn't like to be contained. So I'm not sure if that's the best way to get on her good side. Now we should be far enough away from the jungle that nothing is going to bother us from this part of the island. In fact, if we can just avoid this altogether, I think that might be a good idea. But I suppose there's always the possibility that some wandering Baryina could come out. So we're still going to keep our eyes peeled. Everything looks okay so far? Oh my gosh, we have bunnies out there. We have moles. Oh, this is the promised land that you guys were waiting for, isn't it? It really makes me worried about what's in our future. So we better stockpile our food now. But how strong is it, this baby over here? Oh, isn't that something? She turned out to look so unlike her father because she has such dark fur. But she has both Baryina claws too. So despite her lean body, she is going to be very powerful. And I like to see that she even inherited the antennas in her inactive traits. That might be useful if we can breed that into our tribe. Gotta know when Van Keer's harvests are coming about after all. So in honor of both her brave knight that she left behind, and so many of the creatures in her family, perhaps even her very, very distant ancestors who saved the tribe from the apes in the first place, we're actually going to name this baby Braveheart. I feel like that's a very fitting name for somebody who looks so fierce. Now the baby in the nest must be stirring a little bit of something inside Nutanu as well. I mean, he knows he's getting older. He probably hopes that he can have at least a couple of children before he gets too old. He wants to be a father to them after all. So maybe he's thinking about seeking out Catmint as well. And as he scoots to the other side of the berry bush, he's going to be very, very shocked to see what she has discovered. A wonderful nursery, even better than the one that Ballad is building over here. With healing fruits for them, there is no shortage of healers to keep their babies safe. And that's all well and good because there is the possibility that their babies could end up sick with that immunity gene H. 
But there's also the possibility that their babies could be wonderful, with the home island gene and everything. So I know there's a lot of potential between these two, and that's why I think Catmint is going to finally confess her feelings. It is actually a little bit strange. Normally, creatures aren't so bold as to confess their feelings to a bluebird leader. It's almost always the other way around. But I feel like he really appreciates that kind of like boldness about her, that no-nonsense trait that she has. He saw it too when she ended up cutting down all of those berry bushes. Like, it might mean that she doesn't have quite as much finesse as she would like, but he loves her all the same for it anyways. So I did decide to give Nutano the no albinism trait, because I did notice that both of them have the albinism in their inactive traits. And because we are so close to a jungle, we don't need to attract the apes any closer to us than necessary. So let's try to nip that in the bud before it becomes a problem. I'd like to try to keep the dots on them too, or I guess any type of pattern, just to keep things interesting. Though I suppose there's always a chance that they could end up inheriting the stripes instead. Oh, and how jealous Ballad would be. Though I suppose he doesn't have reason to. If he can find a way to impress the ever flighty passion fruit, then their babies are guaranteed to have the stripes as well. So go ahead and breed with Catmint. Hopefully. There we go. And then we'll use her turns to clear out at least a little bit of the grass. And that leaves poor Clementine all on her own again. She's so shy and quiet. She always seems to be ousted in a way. I mean, she was coming over here hoping to learn a thing or two from their great healers, but it doesn't seem like that's going to happen now. So I guess we could have her search for more healing fruits. Like, I feel like she would want to soak up as much knowledge as possible. She knows that Catmint was able to find this by sniffing around. So maybe she's hoping that she can do the same thing. Maybe if she finds a new healing fruit, that would even put her in the good graces of some of the creatures in our tribe. She just wants to make friends, really, just like her little sister. It would be a good idea for her to seek out Passion again, so she can heal her with her purring. But I'm sure that's like the last thing on her mind. She probably figures, Passion doesn't need me around. She never really has. Why should I bother going back now? Now the unfortunate side effect of having so many creatures with a toxic body in the jungles is that they get very, very hot. So new duke here. You might actually have to stay here after all just trying to catch your fish. Like I know he's another reckless adventurer, so he would prefer to go exploring with passion. But if he can't keep up with our wiry little lean-bodied passion fruit, then I doubt he's going to get very far. He's going to end up getting left behind. Oh, and you scared away our mole. Oh, that's not a good way to impress passion fruit. Maybe you guys can find another together. Or for that matter, maybe she could even find some more of those poison berry bushes. Because she's another creature who can definitely pick from them. Ballad is also quite likely to get left in the dust here. The poor thing. He just can't think of a good way to impress passion fruit. She doesn't seem too interested in sticking around. It's probably making him wonder if he's just like too boring for her. Does he have to pull some sort of crazy stunt? Does he have to go diving straight into the heart of the jungle to get her to notice him? Maybe he can stick to some easier goals and just try to sniff out some of those berry bushes. Hopefully that'll be enough to catch her eye. Oh, we have our first little healing baby in the nest. Ah, uh, but unfortunately it looks like he's sick. Sick with that curse yet again. The same curse that our healers always seem to have. But how cute is he? With the big ears and everything. The stinky tail, so nobody is going to be getting too close to this baby. The apes are going to steer clear. I love those little sunshine freckles that he has too. It looks like little beams of sunlight glistening off of his fur. So despite his unfortunate illness, I know that Nuvon is still going to be very well loved by his family. We'll have to make sure that Nutanu stays next to him, I guess, so we can still scoot Catmint over to the other nest. We'll have him try to breed with her, I guess? Yeah, there we go, that time it worked. And he can scoop up all of those poison berries to feed to his new son. He must be very, very proud. Pretty soon he's going to have a whole new flock of little birds, a flock of sky seekers to teach. Now there certainly weren't any dangers that spawned overnight, right? 
Everything still looks as peaceful as it did before. I know we're really treading some dangerous waters by having Clementine go out further toward the jungle. But if she could only track down one of those healing fruits. Yeah, she found another. Oh, so close to the edge of the jungle. Do you think it would even be worth using this one? I mean, we have to mark it off at the very least. That way, if somebody is down to like the last of their days, we can bring them over there to heal them up quick. Well, at least you were victorious. Now we just have to hope that nothing finds you once we skip the day. There were some bunnies off this way too. I wonder if maybe that's what Ballad could use to impress passion fruit? It's not as though they've had bunnies in such a long time. I'm not sure if this tribe would even know what a bunny is. So pinning down one of these wiry little things? Oh my gosh, it's going to make for an excellent meal. Really? We have another healing fruit right next to our two separate nests? It seems like this is the perfect place for Adam's pride to set up. It is directly mirroring our Sky Seeker's lair. So I think Ballad is definitely going to stake his claim on this one. I wonder if we could have Passion jump in here then? If you scoot over here... Ooh, they have three nests! Oh my goodness! Maybe you should actually work on clearing this place out a little bit then? We'll leave her in the grass as she picks up the roots and the weeds, but she can set up for the attack tomorrow. I'm sure that Rosemary would love to get in on the action too, but she has a little baby to keep track of, so instead we'll have her pick up her nest. I mean, it's not like we're going to need that anymore. We have way too many permanent nests on this island. Maybe this is where the Dota Mingos used to live then. I'm kind of surprised that we haven't seen any yet. I'm sure they're lurking out there somewhere though. Somebody had to build all these nests for us. The other possibility is that it might be a tribe that has already left this island. Maybe the same tribe that ended up stumbling over to these ports and left all these bones behind them. I see you though, little leech. If we bring Braveheart to the side of her mother, then we should be setting a ballad to attack the leech on the next turn. Surely an attempt to keep Passion as safe as possible, but unfortunately it's an effort she isn't likely to notice. Passion is far too distracted by all of those bunnies skittering around in the grasses, or over by the shore even. It seems like they might be getting away from you. So go ahead and claw up this leech, and then we'll have her make her way down to the sand. Actually, if new Duke here lights up the way, right around the healing fruit, then you might be able to chase them down. Oh my gosh, and you found the Krabbit Slayer now too? There is so much food on this island, you guys. Oh, Vankir, you really pulled through for us. I hate to leave her right underneath the coconut tree, but I feel like she would probably be a bit more concerned with the bunny, so she's going to poison it, I guess. Let it go skittering off into the darkness, and I'm sure she'll be able to collect the meat on the next turn. Now we can have new Duke here jump over here and grab this one. Oh, the poor things, they're just a little bit too weak. But Rosemary is still watching from a distance, and she knows that her baby Braveheart could take down any bunny in her path. Now let's take a look at this little baby back here too. Oh, we have a daughter this time. Yes, and she does have the home island gene, so thank goodness she's not sick like her brother. But we are going to have to make sure that somebody purrs for him before he gets too injured. It's so sad when the sickness eats away at their lifespan like that. She does look a lot like her mother. She's just missing the crown of bones on top of her head. But I feel like she's still quite connected to the gravediggers anyway. What with that lovely digging paw of hers. Actually, both of her children have her digging paw. So she hasn't passed down her Baryena Claw yet. In fact, the strength situation in general in this tribe is really starting to concern me. So hopefully we can find somebody for Braveheart to start her family with soon. She might end up being the mother to all of our knights. Now as excited as Clementine is, she's going to take one extra day just to clear out the pathways around here. That way she knows she'll be able to find this place again. She can mark it off. She can make sure that it's protected too. Oh, can you imagine if some rogue wandering creature came by to steal the fruit before she showed it off to the leader? That would be pretty embarrassing. I wonder if maybe we could have Nuvan settle down next to Rosemary for now? 
I'm thinking mainly because she has so much more lifespan left on her. So even if she does end up getting a little bit sick from the Prince's Cold, she would be able to recover quite quickly. And that, of course, gives us the chance to have just one more baby between Cat Minty and Nutanu. I want to see if we can get that whole Mylan Jean on just one more of their kids. We'll have her breed with him this time, so he has plenty of turns to scoop up every last one of those poison berries. And Rosemary then, since she's on babysitting duty now, she could just nudge her daughter out onto the beaches to see if she'll have any more luck with those pesky bunnies. She's nice and fast too, thanks to that lean body, so she's not even really sacrificing her speed for these Bergina Claws. She might actually be like the perfect knight. We just need some ram horns or something to really seal the deal. So we've had our fill of peace. We've had our very first harvest. I wonder if tonight is going to be the night where danger finally strikes. Is everybody okay? Well, aside from those illnesses, of course. It looks like everybody is sick over here. Oh, even Catmint. Nuvon, you really did a number on your family this time. Thankfully, your brother has the home island genes, so he's not sick with the colds. But there's no Bariginas, right? No dangers to be concerned with yet? Nope, just tons and tons of those crabbits. Well, you better move out of the way, passion fruit. We don't want you getting hit on the head with a coconut. But first, I do want to see what this other little prince looks like. He actually looks a little bit darker than Nuvan. Dukta and Nuvan. They look so, so similar. Like they could be twins. But Dukta's darkness runs just a little bit deeper. I'm actually kind of surprised that every single one of them have inherited the purse now it's due. Like, I know the purse now is in Nuvanu's inactive traits, or Nutanu's rather, but I was expecting that at least one of the babies would receive the poison fangs. I wonder if we should keep it that way? I mean, there's still the chance that we could get the poison fangs with passion for each children, if Ballad can only find a way to impress her. In fact, it might even be a good idea for us to place the poison fangs in his mutation menu, because I'm sure that's what he's going to be looking for in one of his babies. It might actually make more sense to keep the purse now on the Sky Seekers. That way the two families will be more distinct. They've already abandoned so many of Adam's ways at this point. I mean, I feel like this is just par for the course for the Sky Seekers. They're always looking for new ways to progress, and the purse now is a wonderful way to ensure that their babies are safe. So Catmint, go ahead and purr for everybody here, I guess. Now that your son has gotten so many of your tribe mates sick, you know, I feel like he would be a little bit embarrassed. Maybe we'll have him run off somewhere to try to find some roots. Just something to repay these creatures for showing him such kindness. If we scoot him over here, he should be able to settle down inside the grass, and we'll have him dig that up on the next turn. And then if we could only find that bunny meat, I'm sure that bunny must have passed away because I definitely saw Passion poison it. So that's what she's going to be looking for. You know, Ballad, this might be your chance to shine. We'll bring you up here so you can sniff around. See if you can track down that bunny. I'm guessing it probably went into the darkness. Oh my gosh. Oh, these permanent nests. There's four of them over here now. Ballad, I... I think it's about time that you asked her if she wanted to start a family. There's no reason to be so nervous now. Somebody's going to have to give him a serious pep talk. I don't know if new Duke here would really be the right type for that. It's not as though he has much experience to lend, and aside from that he is also very very reckless. I feel like he's probably just waiting for the next adventure. I don't know, maybe he could find something to do with Braveheart. Maybe they could even team up and attack the Krabbits for the extra meat? I wonder if she could take one down alone. As long as it wasn't, like, attached to her like this, she probably would be able to. She just needs somebody to distract it. She was out here for the bunnies, but it seems as if the Krabbits have distracted her. But I guess Rosemary would be happy with any meat for the tribe. So in the next episode, we'll have Clementine start making her way back to her tribe. Maybe she could even save the prince with this new healing fruit. As long as she builds her pathway, of course. She knows how absent-minded the Sky Seekers can be, so that's why she's being so meticulous here. 
That's why she's making sure that she is not going to lose a single one of her healing fruits. We might as well bring Catmint over to Rosemary's side as well. If we set her up right here, then they don't have to worry about getting anybody else sick. Rosemary knew what she was getting into, though. I'm sure she's fine with it, even though Nufan is so embarrassed. And new Tanu, thank goodness, gets the chance to spend at least a couple of his last days with his children. So hopefully he'll be able to gauge, I guess, which one of these kids would be the best one to pass the bluebird feathers to. Let's just skip the day one last time, just to make sure that everything remains as calm as it was before on this island. And it seems as if it has. Not a single Baryina, not a single ape slithering around in the darkness. So maybe this will be an easy journey after all. So yeah, if any of you guys know what these ports are, then do let me know. The only ports I remember looking like that were the savannah. And I really, really don't want to go back to a savannah. But hey, if it's our only choice, then what can we do? We have to get to Adam's old island somehow. And I feel like it's just around the corner at this point. We are so close, our little critters can almost taste it. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!